this video we'll talk about exponential functions. Exponential functions have a base that is greater than zero and can't be equal to one and there's all real numbers of x that can go into the domain. And this defines the base b exponential function. So I have some examples down here. I have 2 to the x and over here at this table you can see that if I take 2 to the negative 3, if you remember your exponent rules, that means 1 over 2 to the third or 1 eighth and then if I get down here to 2 to the 0 it's going to be 1 and so on so then this graph comes here so if we look at this graph here we can see that it is increasing and then we want to talk about what the domains are so it's increasing the domain this thing is going like this forever and it's going like this forever so it's this is going up and out to the right and it's going down and to the left so it would be all reals if we talk about the range we want to know how high and how low. Well, this graph doesn't really, kind of looks like it, but it never really crosses the x-axis. If I take 2 to the negative some big number, I'm still going to have a fraction that's not 0. So we have to say that it's going to be from, in a parenthesis, 0, but it goes up to infinity. So now let's look at and see if we can graph g of x is equal to 1 half to the x, where b is between 0 and 1 down here. So if we put negative 3, that's going to be 1 half, but we have to flip it over to take care of the negative, and then we have 2 to the third, which is going to be 8. So negative 3 will give us positive 8 somewhere way in the sky. And then there should be a negative 2 here. If I put negative 2 in there, I'm going to get 4. And if I put negative 1 in there, I'll get 2. And if I put 0 in there, I'll get 1. And 1 half for 1, 1 fourth for 2, and so on. You can see that this graph is going to be same basic shape, but it's going the other direction because it is decreasing. Now we want to look at the domain again. It's still going left and right forever, so that's going to be all reals. The range, again, is going to be from 0 to infinity because it's above the x-axis. So now we want to graph one ourselves. Now if we do that, let's see if I can make my graph a little bit better. We know, let's talk about the transformations here. So we have x minus 3. So this would be 3 to the x normally. Look very similar to the first one we just looked at, a little bit steeper. But when we take the x and in the function, which is our exponential function, so up in the exponent we're subtracting 3. That means we're going to go right 3. And then this plus 2 is going to move it up and down. That's what that constant does, so it's going to go up. Two. Let's see if we can draw in some axes here. It's not real easy to do with my tablet, but if I get in, there's, we'll call that our y-axis, and we'll call this our x-axis, and I want to do 3 to the x first. If I did 3 to the x, it would, 3 to the 0 would be 1, 3 to the first would be 3, and so on. So it would be a graph that looked like this. Oops, I missed, but you get the idea. Now we want to look at take like this point here. We'll go over 3, 1, 2, 3, and then up 2, 1, 2. Take this point, we'll go over 1, 2, 3, and then up 2, 1, 2. And if we put 0 in here, just so that we know what happens on the y-axis, when x is 0, we're going to have 3 to the negative 3, which is 1 ninth, and then, which would be way down here, then go up 2. So 1, 2. So it would be somewhere around here. So this graph, it would look something like this domain is still all reals. The range is now tending toward, I probably shouldn't have been quite so low, it's tending toward now this 2. This is the better graph. Get rid of this. Uh, so the range should be that y is greater than 2, so 2 to infinity, so we can't quite get to 2. So the horizontal asymptote would be y equal to, and b is greater than 1. It's an increasing function so that we know b is greater than 1. Alright, so let's talk about the natural number e. And I want you to realize that this is a number. It's not a variable. It's a number. For, it says x equal, it's greater than 0. Then as x goes to infinity, it gets really large, then this little thing looking here, 1 plus 1 over x to the x, will become e. So if you were to put in your calculator 1 plus 1 over 1 million to the 1 million, you're going to find out that you get close to this number, which is 2.71 blah 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 blah. And that's what the value of e. And it's a naturally occurring number in science especially, and in nature. So it's so common we call it the natural number. So y equal e to the x will be our exponential function. 
using e. So it says find e to the x for f of 10 and really we're just saying what is e to the 10 and I need to call my calculator up in a minute and then this one's really saying e to the negative 3 so I've called my calculator up here and we want to know e. To do find e you do second ln and it gives you the e with the caret and we put in 10 and we're gonna get this number 22,026.46579 I'll put that in in a minute and then we're gonna do again over for f of negative 3 second ln that gives me e and then I put in my negative 3 and we get 0 0.049 so it's a smaller number because it's a negative we're saying 1 over e to the third so when I actually did these this gave me oh things are going bad again to the 10 was equal to 22,026 to 22,026.47 and e to the negative 3 was 0 0.049 so we rounded to 0 0.05 so now we want to use our exponentials to solve some equations and there's a couple facts that we need to know if b of m is equal to b of n the bases are the same then we know that their exponents are the same equal bases implies equal exponents if they're not equal then the bases with the exponents aren't going to be equal to each other either so we want to solve these problems so we want to get the same base is what it's really saying so 12 I can get 12 to the x because most of us know that 144 is 12 squared so if my bases are the same that means that my exponents are the same so over here I'm looking at 9 to the x minus 1 but 27 I can't think of I mean 9 squared is going to be 81 so my base can't be 9 but 3 squared would be 9 so I'm going to rewrite 9 as 3 squared and then it's still raised to the x minus 1 and I know that 3 cubed is 27 so if I do my exponent property that says I can multiply my exponents when one's on the inside one's on the outside I'm going to have 3 to the 2x minus 2 is equal to 3 to the 3 or we can say 2x minus 2 is equal to 3 2x is equal to x is equal to 5 over 2 and we could double check that with our calculator we could clear all this out and say go back and say 9 carats and then what did we say x was I've got more than one thing happening in my exponent so I need a parenthesis and it's 5 divided by 2 and then from that I'm going to subtract 1 an order of operation says it'll divide before I subtract and that should be equal to 27 and it is so we know we did it right alright so then we need to do this one and one half and this is a fraction this one's not but I could make one half become 2 and that might be a little bit easier to work with so I'm going to say that this is 2 to the negative first, that would be 1 half, is equal to 3x. And I happen to know that 8 is 2 to the third, but I could always check in my calculator 2 to the x and find it where I find it, 8. And I'd have x minus 2. So multiplying these exponents, I know these exponents are going to be equal to each other, so I'm not going to carry down the base anymore. I'm just going to distribute my exponent. So negative 3x is equal to 3x distributing minus 6. I subtract this 3x over here I'll have negative 6x is equal to negative 6 which tells me then that x is equal to 1.